Greetings, my fellow Nephilim. We are just a week away from the launch of Darksiders 3, and I think we can all agree that this game can't come soon enough. Now, in anticipation of the game's launch, Gunfire has released one more trailer for us to drool over until then, and I gotta say, this one, in my opinion, is the best trailer that they've released so far for Darksiders 3. It gives us a much broader look at the Seven Deadly Sins and Fury's badassery, so if you weren't hyped for the game already, I think this trailer just might seal the deal. Now, I wanted to do a really quick breakdown of what we see in the trailer, so if you haven't watched it yet, I recommend you do so right now, I'll have it linked in the description, so that way you can see the trailer in its full glory and then come back for a bit of discussion. Now, the trailer does show quite a bit in terms of the Seven Deadly Sins, as well as Fury's Hollow Forms, which some of you might consider spoilers, so take this as your mild spoiler warning. Alright you guys, let's get into it. So the opening of the trailer starts off at a subway station on Earth, and in case you didn't know, Darksiders 3 does take place on Earth shortly after the start of the apocalypse, similar to the first game. And from here we jump right into a quick shot of a few of the seven deadly sins. Here we see Envy, Wrath, and a character wearing a mask who has not been revealed to us just yet, so assuming that this is one of the sins, I would guess that this one might be Lust, given the appearance and demeanor, but then again it could also be Pride. And then lastly, we see the character that we saw in the artwork for Fury's Force Hollow, and the common consensus is that this is greed, given, you know, the context and whatnot. Alright, so the next part very briefly shows the Charred Council, giving Fury her orders to visit Earth to take out the Seven Deadly Sins, and then we move on to this area, which was actually the starting area that I got to play in the demo at PAX, and it looks like they're just showing off some of Fury's whip maneuvers. And then we move on to see a cameo of the legendary merchant himself, Vulgrim, whose mouth sorta of gets him in trouble at the end of this trailer, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so after a quick glimpse at the Lava Brute, we see Fury meet with the Lord of Hollows, who we know gives Fury her flame hollow form, which we will see a little bit later in the trailer. Now, it's unclear whether the Hollow Lord actually grants Fury all of her hollow forms or just the flame one, but judging by the name, I think that the Lord of Hollows is probably the go-to guy for all of the hollows. Okay, so I wanted to pause it here just briefly, because in the background we can see this chunky fella sort of wading through the water behind what appears to be just a pair of lesser skeleton minions, and if I had to wager a guess, I'd say this might be the gluttony sin, because he looks like he enjoys feasting on some souls, and I doubt that this is some random enemy because his design is so distinct, but we'll have to wait and see next week when the game comes out. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Alright, so this next part shows sort of an ominous looking tree that's covered in hanging dead Hellguard angels, which we saw in some of the leaked artwork for Fury's Electric Hollow. Then right after that we see Fury walk through a portal to some other realm, and it has this huge staircase with a massive door, and perhaps this leads to one of the Sins or another boss of some kind. So this is where Fury receives the Flame Hollow from the Lord of Hollows, who I mentioned earlier, and then we get to see a bit of this hollow in action as well. And in case you didn't know, each hollow gives Fury a new weapon and moveset to use, so for the Flame Hollow she gets this fiery set of flails. Alright, so back to the Charred Council again, we hear a quick comment from War, who at this point is still imprisoned, and from the sounds of it, it seems like Liam O'Brien has reprised his role as War, though whether or not we'll hear more from War or even Death remains to be seen. Now here we get to see a full body shot of the Sin from earlier, and this character looks sort of like a corrupted angel, which is definitely a concept that the Darksiders series is familiar with. And speaking of which, here we see a brief cameo from the Destroyer, who is essentially the main villain from the first Darksiders game, and since Darksiders 3 takes place prior to the events of the first game, it does make sense for the Destroyer to be present on Earth when Fury arrives. Now, we know that Fury doesn't defeat the Destroyer, so it'll be interesting to see what role Abaddon or the Destroyer have to play in the third game. Right here, we very briefly see Fury fighting in some sort of arena, but it's probably not the Crucible arena since that's coming with the DLC, so this could just be a part of one of the dungeon areas. Now, I'm gonna pause it right here because these next few frames sort of reveal some details to us. So on the right, we see Fury battling some sort of Cthulhu-looking creature who is most likely one of the Seven Deadly Sins that we haven't seen yet, and I'm gonna guess that this might be Pride because that's really the only sin that's unaccounted for, assuming that my previous guesses were correct. And we also see Fury using her Force Hollow form, which sort of makes her heavy and we know that it gives her the ability to walk around and maneuver underwater instead of having to swim, and judging by the scenery and the bubbles around her, it seems that this fight is going to take place entirely underwater, which is really cool. 
Now, what this also tells us is that Fury needs to receive her Force Hollow before fighting this boss, so even if you find this boss's lair, you can't actually fight it unless you have obtained the Force ability so that you can fight underwater. So even though the game lets you explore and find your own path to reach the Seven Deadly Sins, this is sort of the developer's way of guiding our behaviors as players a little bit. Okay, so coming up is my favorite part of this trailer, and it's this witty little comment from Sloth. Whoa. I don't know why, but that just makes me laugh every time I hear it. Alright, so the last major part of this trailer is this quick clip of Fury using her Electric Hollow, which we've heard the developers refer to as the Storm or the Air Hollow, and in this form, Fury's weapon transforms into this huge spear, which should be pretty good for long range as well as swinging around her body to take out enemies all around her, so I'm really interested in trying out that Hollow. Now, of course, because Fury's the one that brings the sass, she makes sure that Volgrim knows it by putting him in his place right here at the end of the trailer, though I'm sure Volgrim has seen some stuff in his time, so I think he can handle a little bit of whip action. Alright everyone, that wraps up this quick breakdown of the Fury's Apocalypse trailer for Darksiders 3, and this is probably going to be the last trailer that we get up until launch, so I hope you guys are as excited as I am to get your hands on the game. It has been way too long, so I am pumped, and uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of some of my observations in this video, and if you have any other observations or comments of your own as well. I'd also like to know if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover for Darksiders 3, and if so, please leave me a comment below. Otherwise, I will just uh, try to knock out as much stuff as I can in the coming weeks after the game comes out. And uh, yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys at the next video.